The Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company. Tonight, Walter Brennan and Richard Hawk star in a dramatic story of discovery. The Seven Iron Men on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. Better things that include DuPont nylon, DuPont cellophane, DuPont plastics. Fifty-odd years ago, in northern Minnesota, in the rugged wilderness of rock and forest that surrounds Lake Superior a great discovery was made. A discovery to which we in America owe our skyscrapers, railroads, and automobiles. And today, the tanks, shells, and ships that will bring us victory. This evening's cavalcade is about that discovery, about some men named Merritt, whose lives and work in the Lake Superior region is one of the epic stories of America. Walter Brennan appears as Cy Kinney, and Richard Woff, who has just directed the metro Golden mayor picture, Blonde Fever, plays the role of Lon Merritt. The DuPont Company presents The Seven Iron Men, starring Walter Brennan and Richard Wharf on the DuPont Cavalcade. My name is Cy Kinney, and I'm an old timber cruiser from Minnesota. Lived in the Northwest all my life. Well, tonight's an important night up our way because the St. Paul Association is having a meeting to take stock of what Minnesota was, is, and is going to be. They're unveiling a big picture all about the Northwest. And they're listening to facts and figures brought in by experts. Experts on Minnesota food and iron ore and timber. But you know, there's some guests at this meeting most of the others can't see. But I can... I can see engine fighters, pathfinders, French voyageurs, traders, all the men and women who built the Northwest. And they're the Merritt brothers and their sons that we used to call the Iron Men. Say, I want to tell you a story about these Merritt brothers, how they came up to this wilderness nearly a hundred years ago and how they found... Well, (laughs) that's the story. In 1856, this was a wilderness, all right. But Lewis Merritt, father of the Merritt boys, moved a thousand miles from the rich farmland of Ohio up through Lake Huron and Lake Superior to take up a squatter's claim at the head of the lakes. He built himself a log house there and waited for his wife, Hepzibeth, and their five youngest sons to come the long way by steamboat to Minnesota Point. In front of that log house was the cold St. Louis River, and behind it, a heap of old gray rock called the Duluth Gabbro. And the top of that hill was the beginning of nowhere. Even the engines couldn't say what lay north of it. But when Hepzibeth got to Oneonta, to that log house, bringing with her a black cow and all her household goods, she hoped it was going to be home. A home for herself and Louis and their growing sons. Louis? Hmm? Who's that man down in the clearing with the boys? They've been hanging around him all morning. The one who's with the lawn. Oh, there, that's Joe Salt. Who? Joe Salt. He has a friend named Joe Pepper. They're Indians from the band of the Nicondas. Indians? I'll tell Lon to bring him over. He's a good fellow. Uh, Lon! Lon, you too, Joe. Indians? Aren't they... Well, aren't they... Dangerous? No, no, not the Jibway. I tell you, Joe Salt's a good man. You calling me, Dad? Yes, I want your mother to meet Joe. Come here, Joe. A good day, Mr. Miller. Good day. This is my wife, Hepzibeth, who sailed here from Ohio. Oh, good day. You are mother of many sons. Many, yes. Seven of them altogether. Ma, Joe's been telling us all about this country. 